Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. This is Related Rates Part 2. So in this video, we're going to work on solving three related rates problems. If you haven't watched Part 1 or the lecture video on related rates, I'll link them here. But let's just jump right in. So first example, a man six feet tall walks at a rate of three feet per second away from a lamp post that is 18 feet high. So here's a lamp post. Okay, yes, here's the ground. We love it. There's light coming from the lamp post. And then here's this man walking. He's walking away from the lamp post, that away. The lamp post is 18 feet high. The man is six feet tall. Beautiful. At what rate is the length of his shadow changing? when he is 40 feet away from the lamppost. Okay, so his shadow is going to be in front of him. Let's just say that whole length right here, that's his shadow. And we wanna know what rate is the length of that shadow changing when he's 40 feet away from the lamppost. Okay, so we have two distances that are changing here. The distance that he is away from the lamppost and then the length of his shadow. So we should call them something. I'm gonna call X the distance that the man is from the lamppost, and then Y is gonna be the length of his shadow. So let's see, based on the information that they gave us, if we can identify what these rates of change are. So we've got that he's walking at three feet per second. The rate at which he walks is gonna tell us the rate at which this distance X changes with respect to time. So three feet per second is dx dt, right? Good. Then they're asking at what rate is the length of his shadow changing? So the problem is asking for the rate of change of the length of his shadow, which we've called y, with respect to time. And when do they want it? specifically when he's 40 feet away from the lamppost. So when x equals 40 feet. All right, you plug in that specific info always at the end. How to solve from here, you're gonna set up a proportion using similar triangles. So I want you to notice here, we've got big triangle. This is the lamppost, the height. This distance down here would be x plus y, the base. And then sitting inside, we have another triangle. And the height of this smaller triangle is six, the height of the man. The base is y. And these two triangles are in proportion to one another. So the ratio between their sides, the corresponding sides is constant. So what does that mean? We could set it up a number of different ways, 18 over six, is equal to x plus y over y. Also, you could do 18 over x plus y equals six over y. It doesn't really matter. Just be consistent in your setup. Okay, I'm trying to figure out dy dt. So my goal is to isolate y in this proportion. And first thing I notice is 18 over six, that reduces, so let's reduce that three equals x plus y over y. Let me multiply through both sides by y. So 3y equals x plus y. Oh, we're almost there. So subtracting y, I have 2y equals x. So y is equal to 1 half x. Now we can actually go ahead, differentiate both sides with respect to time. And this one's very easy to differentiate, hopefully. So derivative of y with respect to t would be dy dt. Derivative of 1 half x would be 1 half dx dt. And remember, they gave us dx dt. That's how fast he's walking. He's walking at 3 feet per second. So I'm going to substitute that in for dx dt. And our final answer is three halves feet per second. So you might be thinking, wait a minute, we didn't even use the 40. I know, it didn't matter. <laughs> the rate of change of his shadow 
is not impacted by the distance that he is away from the lamppost. Isn't that interesting? But rather the speed at which he's walking is controlling it. All right. That was hopefully a good little warm up. We've got another one coming your way. The radius of a right circular cylinder is increasing at a rate of eight inches per second, while the height is decreasing at the rate of nine inches per second. At what rate is the volume of the cylinder changing when the radius is seven inches and the height is 20 inches? Okay, so let's draw a picture. The, we're talking about a right circular cylinder. What does that look like? Like a can, okay? Let me just copy this. I'm gonna make a beautiful one. What does it mean that it's a right circular cylinder? That the base is directly below the, high, uh, the top at a right angle. The height is taken 90 degrees from the base. An example of a non-right circular cylinder would be something like this, where it's all slanty, right? Okay, so that's not what we got going on. We've got a right circular cylinder. The height is perpendicular to the base love it and they told us that its radius is increasing at a rate of eight inches per second so there's the radius this is the height this is a derivative right the radius is increasing at a rate of eight inches per second dr dt is eight inches per second the height is decreasing that means it's going to be a negative rate of change at the rate of nine inches per second. So that means dh dt is negative nine inches per second. What do these people want from us? At what rate is the volume changing? So they want dv dt. When do they want it? When the radius is seven inches and the height is 20 inches. We're gonna plug in seven and 20 at the very end. Okay, do you know the formula for the volume of a right circular cylinder? So volume formulas have the same general structure. You take the area of the base times the height, as long as it's a right solid and it's not like a cone shaped sort of thing. So volume is gonna be area of the base, which is a circle, pi r squared, times the height h. Okay, it looks good. Um, I have v as a function of r and h, and that's fine because they gave me dr dt and they gave me dh dt. So I have enough information to proceed from here. We'll go ahead, differentiate both sides with respect to time. Now here's where you need to be careful. So left-hand side, this should be no problem, dv dt. On the right-hand side, both r and h are changing with respect to time. So that means we have to use the product rule when we differentiate the right-hand side. Um, pi is just a constant, so you're not doing like a triple product rule. You can either make pi part of r squared when you're thinking of the product rule, or I'm just gonna put it outside, okay? And then differentiate. So let's go. Derivative of r squared with respect to t is gonna be 2r dr dt and then I'm gonna leave H alone, plus, and then now I'll leave R squared alone. Derivative of H with respect to T is dH dt. Voila. And then now we can go ahead, substitute in all the info that they gave us in the problem. So we get dV dt at the precise moment that they want it. So we have pi times two times. So for this R, I'm gonna use the seven inches seven and then dr dt what was that that was eight inches per second times the height that's 20 plus r squared that's seven squared times dh dt that was negative nine all right beautiful so then we're gonna have pi times two times seven times eight times 20 that's 2240 minus 49 times 9 is 441. So final answer, dv dt equals 2240 minus 441 is 7, 
$15.99 pie. Be careful with your units. It's DVDT. So volumes units would be inches cubed in this problem and time is being measured in seconds. Lovely. Okay, how was that one? Do you hear the birds chirping? I'm actually recording this in my parents' backyard right now. It was too beautiful out and uh, I can't quite go home right now. So hope you like the ambiance. Last problem. Solve and then it says round your answer if appropriate. So it looks like we'll probably be putting everything in our calculator at the end, not leaving it in terms of pi or as a fraction. Okay, water is being drained from a container which has the shape of an inverted right circular cone. So what that means is you have a cone and it's upside down, it's inverted. And why are they telling us that? Because it's, it's upside down so it can hold something. It's holding water and water's being drained out of it. The container has a radius of two inches at the top. Okay, so that right there, that's two inches. And a height of five inches. So this is five inches. At the instant when the water in the container is two inches deep, the surface level is falling at a rate of 1.9 inches per second. Find the rate at which water is being drained from the container. Okay, there's quite a bit going on. First, they are asking us to find the rate at which water is being drained. That would be represented by the change in volume. So what they want is dv dt. And when do they want this rate of change at the instant when the water in the container is two inches deep. So as water is draining out, right, this water level is changing. So the height of the water is changing. Um, and the radius is also changing simultaneously as water is being poured out. So we can call the changing height of the water H. How's that sound? I think it sounds great. Um, and then the changing radius, we'll call it R, okay? So when H is two inches, that's the instant when the water is two inches deep, the surface level or the height of the water is falling at a rate of 1.9 inches per second. Falling means it's going down. So this is a negative rate of change, negative 1.9 inches per second. Okay, so I have H, I have dH dt, and they want dV dt. So do we know the formula for the volume of a cone? It's super similar to the volume of that right circular cylinder that we looked at earlier. It's going to be area of the base times height, so pi r squared times H, but obviously it's not going to have as much volume as a right circular cylinder because it's a cone, yes? So to counter or to comp or to take that into consideration, how about that? <laughs> We're gonna add a one third. That's how the formula works. If you're interested in why it's a one third, well, wait. When you're in more advanced calculus, you'll see you can even prove this formula. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at what's going on right now. Very similar to the last volume formula that we differentiated. However, they only gave me dH dt in this problem. They did not give me dr dt the way they did in the last problem which means I'm gonna be in trouble if I differentiate right now with respect to time. The only variables that I want in this equation are H and V. So we have got to get rid of R. And how are we gonna do that? Using similar triangles. So I want you to notice here, we have the height and radius of the cone when it's all the way full as two inches and five inches. And this is gonna be in proportion to the radius and the height inside this very same cone as the water level is changing. So here's R and H. So again, we're gonna set up a little proportion. Um, I'm trying to get rid of R. So let me set it up so R is in the numerator. So R over two equals H over five, okay? And then I can get R by itself very easily. R equals 2H over 5. 
Now we're gonna go back here, substitute that in. So V equals 1 third pi. Instead of R, I have 2H over 5 squared times H. Okay, don't differentiate just yet. Let's get it as cleaned up as possible. So V equals 1 third pi times 4H squared over 25 times H. And I can simplify just a bit further. Let me combine all the constants out front. So V equals 4 pi over 75 H cubed. Okay, just combining the exponents here. We have H squared and H to the first. Now let's go ahead, differentiate with respect to time. Every related rates problem, you're gonna differentiate with respect to time. And let's see what we got. So dV dt equals, don't stress out, four pi over 75 is just a constant. Just bring it down, it's along for the ride. Derivative of h cubed with respect to time is 3h squared times dh dt. That's it, look. So at this point, it's pretty easy because we didn't have to do product rule the way we did in the last example. And then let's just simplify further. So this is four pi, this three cancels. Now all I have is a 25 in the denominator. And then we have h squared dh dt. And then now we can go ahead and substitute in everything that they gave us. So we know that dv dt is gonna equal four pi over 25. They asked for this rate of change when h is two. So two squared times dh dt was negative 1.9. Okay, so four pi times four, that's gonna be 16 pi over 25 times negative 1.9. And then we're just gonna round our answer since they said we could. It says if appropriate. All right, I'm just gonna punch everything in the calculator. Let's do two decimal places. So this is gonna be negative 3.82 inches cubed per second. Why inches cubed? Because this is rate of change of the volume. Volume is always measured three dimensional units cubed with respect to time. And this problem was being measured in seconds. Okay, so that concludes the video. Hope you found it helpful. If you enjoyed this lesson, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment, tell me how your day's going. It's Friday, I love Fridays. And it's actually surprisingly nice out considering it's October. So I hope you're having a fabulous Friday. Um, I also have full playlist on my YouTube channel for calculus one, two, three, as well as pre-calc, trig, lots of algebra lectures. So check it out if you haven't. And if you click the join button, then you get access to exclusive content if you're a member of this channel and other perks. So if, that, if you're into the VIP life, I think it's for you. Anyway, stay tuned guys. I got lots more videos coming your way. See you soon.